bill. Now, I don't know about you, but um, I don't think that many of the people that we work for are prepared to take that sort of million pound gamble. So the simple answer is that justification, which is basically the defense that it's true and we can prove it, sounds like a good libel defense, but has, uh, is flawed because it's often quite hard to prove something. Um, it does mean, though, that investigative programs will set out to get the evidence uh, required to back up their claims. There are, however, and not enough time really to go into them in detail just now, um, some very important defences for libel, one of which is the freedom of speech sort of defence, which is fair comment, which is a defence of opinion, and is very, very strong. If you've got an honest opinion, and it's based on fact, um, expressed, you know, with no improper motive on your part and on an issue that's in the public interest, that's a very sweeping defence. And that would cover you for your reviews and satire and comment columns and editorials and your personal um, comment pieces. Um, and the, you'll be all the safer, if, if you like, in a review, for example. There's nothing stopping you criticising um, the restaurant or the play. But the safest way to do it is to give the evidence to support your claim. And rather than just being abusive, to explain, for example, if you're saying the acting's bad, in what way is it bad? Why is it bad? How is it bad? You know, is it because, you know, the wooden expression and the monotone voice? You know, give the evidence and you've got a very strong sort of fair comment defense there. Um... Reham asked, uh, incidentally, yeah, just to, f to, to finish on that point, the other sweeping and very powerful defence uh, um, relates to privilege and circumstances where we've actually got protection in, in law for uh, fairly inaccurately reporting things. Um, absolute privilege covers us for all court reports as long as we're fair and accurate. Um, and qualified privilege, which is every bit as powerful, um, protect us at common law for our own parliament. We've, we've certainly got privilege for, effectively, for every parliament in the world and all courts in the world and international organisations and so on. And more important as a form of privilege that we have to protect us for reporting what happens at council meetings and at public meetings, press conferences and uh, in a wide variety of situations like official statements and so on. And basically, if you're going to be a, a reporter particularly, um, that's um, a, a crucial bit of knowledge about when are you safe to use something. So the difference between your friend at the police station tipping you off about somebody being arrested, which is not safe, and if they're released without charge and you've implied that they were guilty of something, then you can sue the world. Um, and the difference between that and an official statement, which is covered by qualified privilege, which if you fairly inaccurate official police statement of somebody arrested, that's actually safety. So, without in any way trying to panic you, um, and it's something that I know that some of you, Scarlett and Alan and, and others mentioned, got um, those of you on the freelance courses have got a specific module where you this in some detail. Those um, who are on things like sub-editing and journalism, well, will also cover that. Um, and it's obviously something that you can, some of you are quite early in your distance learning courses. So it's a, that's great a head start really, so that you're thinking these issues before actually getting, getting out, covering stories. Uh, Riam's asking, are, are defamation and privacy stricter when it comes to non-public figures? Um, I don't know about stricter. I mean, traditionally, libel used to be an issue that was more um, a problem with rich people because um, it wasn't subject to legal aid. But um, some years ago now, um, no win, no fee schemes were introduced. So, and also small claims actions for, for libel. So it's certainly true today to say that ordinary people can sue for 
Gods who is just the rock stars and stars with big egos. And certainly on the privacy front, I think you probably are right that the more you do to protect your privacy, the more you um, efforts that you take to um, uh, you know, ensure that you're not in the papers, um, then obviously uh, the, the issue of people intruding into your privacy without due cause is going to be um, more serious. And, and we see that, for example, uh, uh, the difference being even amongst celebrities is, is, um, is the extent to which you expose your family and your children and so on to publicity. So that I mean, if David Beckham is taking the children to the football match, um, he can't expect that to be private. On the other hand, I think um, if he takes them on a public, uh, even on a public beach, but on holiday somewhere on the other side of the world, um, then there's a big question mark these days about um, normally in the past list. I mean, obviously it's not, you know, it's not something that directly affects most of us because um, we are, whether it's a website or a magazine or whatever, we are writing around it. But uh, yes, there have been a couple of obscure cases um, um, lately. And, uh, uh, you, I, in fact, the, there are a couple of, of ongoing ones on the books, I think, involving America. And I think part of the issue is where your reputation is, but obviously the issue of publication. So I can't answer your specific question on those authors, but we did have a case in, a, in a, um, another one in Australia where again involving Dow Jones, where I think um, Dow Jones was saying, OK, bring it on, we'll fight you in America. And uh, the businessman in Melbourne was saying, well, no, my reputation is damaged in Melbourne. Uh, that's where I'd like to fight the case. So I think we, you know, this is something that, I mean, the internet is relatively young in legal terms, if you like, for um, test cases. We've had our first sort of Facebook Bible, had our first friends other social networking sites, you know, involved in libel actions. Um, but there's a lot of untested and grey areas of the law that are quite interesting and scary, <laughs> if you like, if you're a publisher. It's, um, you know, obviously, posting blogs, you're allowing your readers to say things quite frankly. It's a bit scary. Now, I know that some of you are... Um, Sort of here for an hour and, and looking slightly restless, so I don't want to keep, <laughs> don't want to keep you too long. Um, I'll just invite if there are any final um, sort of immediate queries. Um, any sort of um, we obviously I think uh, appreciate any feedback about any uh, problems you've had or how the experience has been overall. So feel free to school on that, and also a couple of the um, subjects that we've touched on. I mean if Bible is a subject itself, so if you're interested in any particular area of the, of the law, for example, just to, to spend another session on it, something you can suggest as well. Thanks very much to, to Parker and, and Titan for, for looking after you and uh, getting you seated and so on. I'm a, I'm a similar to this, so I find it slightly unsettling. It's lovely to see you all. Um, it's also the first one of these I've actually done from home, which is slightly spooky as well. So, just for my phone to go on. Um, and good luck with your um, good luck with your uh, the courses that you're undertaking. And uh, lovely to see some of you again for the, for the second time. A bit easier to come back next time. Best of luck, and and uh, don't let me scare you off writing. I mean, it's just useful. Alarm bells are or you leap into print. <laughs> Get involved in a costly libel action. Woohoo! Well done, Joe. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, well, I'll um, I'll log off just now and leave you to um, to exit the room and and ask any technical questions. So um, lovely to see you all, and uh, I'll say good night just now. Cheers. Man.